In this week's episode, a rural village boy gives the world the first digital laser. But first, what she started as a small Saturday class has grown into a fully-fledged college, touching Nelson Mandela's heart. Towards the end of apartheid, black students who wanted to go to white schools needed to take a bridging course. Jackie Gallagher started after school classes with a handful of township children, preparing them for the so-called Model C schools. Twenty years later, Jackie's classes have developed into two fully-fledged schools and an FET college, producing top students. But this visionary teacher had to overcome trials and tribulations of her own, including sexual abuse and poverty. Jackie Gallagher was born into confusion. An unstable family troubled by alcohol abuse and poverty. When her parents separated in the 1960s, she was dumped at a children's home along with her siblings. So there wasn't really anybody else to take care of us or come and fetch us, so we landed up um, first going to Epworth Children's Home for quite a while and then being moved to Johannesburg Children's Home. It was a life of nothing but emptiness. I remember um, times of being very afraid, um, sort of being very cut off. And I'm sure that, although I wouldn't have been able to verbalize it at that time, but just those feelings of rejection, um, not having anybody that cares for you, um, those feelings were quite profound and, and, and quite real. When Jackie turned 11, her mother and her new partner suddenly picked her up along with her siblings and moved back to Triumph. It turned out to be a regrettable decision. From a life of emptiness at children's homes to sexual abuse at the hands of a monstrous stepfather. It was back in the day when nobody spoke about these things um, either, you know, so you, there was no adult to talk to um, about what was happening because um, if the mother didn't believe you then who was going to support you, you know. Um, you definitely didn't speak about it outside of the family. And so, um, yeah, it, that, 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 that was the very difficult um, part of growing up and, and, and realizing also that something wasn't right. School was the only place the teenager experienced a bit of joy. I did spend many happy hours at school because school was also a safe environment. And, you know, the, the teachers were there and friends were there and, you know, your peers are there. With so much unhappiness in her life, only one thing kept her going. I just really wanted education then. I, I wanted to matriculate. I wanted to, you know, I was the first person to matriculate in the family. I wanted to get there at all costs um, and then go on to study. She eventually matriculated in 1979 and went into the field of education, leaving all her misery back in triumph. I absolutely loved teaching. I realized I had a real gift for it. Um, I loved working with kids. I loved imparting knowledge. Jackie taught at a school in Alexandra Township in the 1980s. But she gradually became disillusioned by the apartheid education system and how it treated black children. So in the late 80s, when the then National Party government was talking about change in the education system, I had a few friends, four friends approach me to say, would you give our children extra lessons? Would you help them get into the open white schools? Because that's what they were called at that time. And I was, yeah, well. 
but nothing for free, you know. I want people to have dignity and I want people to take responsibility. So parents paid me 35 rand a month and I gave the children extra lessons on a Saturday morning. Um, and the four became 27. Essentially, Jackie was helping to prepare black students for racially integrated schools. From a social point of view and from a dignity point of view, children needed to feel equal. Um, and what was happening at that time is that the, the few children that were making it into the schools kind of would have to do extra lessons during, say, music or art or the fun things. And then it would always be that question, well, is it because I'm black that I can't go and do this? And, and just also what black parents' expectations were that now that my child's in a white school, they better do well. Jackie's Saturday classes grew. As she displayed a strong desire to help black pupils in an unfair political system, parents wanted her to open a full-time school. Former Sowetan newspaper editor Agri Klaste, who firmly believed in nation building, became Jackie's mentor. He was influential, serving as an advisor in helping to make Jackie's dream come true. With financial assistance from Jackie's friends, relatives, church and the community at large, Sparrow Schools officially opened its doors in 1993. I think initially uh, when I first joined Sparrow it was that they offered something that, you know, back then in 2001, there was literally nobody offering training in vocational skill training for learners that just couldn't cope in a high school environment. So that was really my biggest attraction is that I kind of knew that back then we were going to face a skill shortage in the country. More than two decades later, what started as a Saturday class has grown into two fully-fledged schools and a college producing quality learners. And we realise that the biggest need is actually a child with a learning difficulty. And, and, and we've come to realise again over... Um, so we then changed our focus completely on two. We work with young people and children with learning difficulties. We have a primary school, a high school and an FET college. And that's where our area of focus is. Sparrow now has a board of trustees and sponsors who ensure the institution has enough funds to run smoothly. And with a shortage of skills in South Africa, its FET college plays a crucial role preparing students for industries. I studied logistics, you know, and I graduated, got my diploma, and currently doing my Bachelor of Business Administration in um, Disaster Risk Management. And this is how I got to define Sparrow in, in my journey, that indeed Sparrow is a nest that we all need to develop and grow to be better young people or to be better people in the society. The nation salutes you, Jackie, and your team for your incredible work. Send us your feedback and let us know what you think. Against all odds at enca.com. You can also be in touch with us on Twitter and Facebook. Still to come, a rural village boy creates the world's first digital laser. <laughs>